Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video we are going to calculate the plastic bending moment of a rectangular cross section with the width of B and height of H but the material is in a way that the tension yielding point is different from the compressive yielding point. In the previous video we went through a, uh, an asymmetric cross section and we calculated the elastic and plastic neutral axis and we noticed that uh, the neutral axis uh, will be changed after uh, the bending moment goes beyond the elastic moment. Now we are going to use a simple rectangular cross section but the material is behaving differently in tension and compression. Assume we have a cross section with a width of B and height of H and the material is sigma Y, epsilon Y and this is representing the material behavior in tension and for compression epsilon and sigma but uh, we have to notice that uh, in this example we assume that the uh, modulus of elasticity is the same in compression and tension. It can be different as well, but here we are focusing on different uh, yielding point. So first of all, we need to understand how to solve and understand the scope of this example. We are going to calculate what is the elastic bending moment we can apply through this cross section. And after that, what would happen until the uh, cross section becomes completely plastic so if we sketch the cross section from the side as long as the cross section is in elastic phase so we can uh, sketch the neutral axis which is completely in the center of the cross section of rectangle and moment of inertia in elastic is bh3 divided by 12 w elastic is i divided by c and is bh3 divided by 6 and we can calculate the elastic bending moment. Let's assume that uh, sigma y is 250 megapascal and E is 200 gigapascal. So sigma y in tension will be 250 or let's go with 240 which is easier number for this example. 240 megapascal sigma y in compression is two third which will be 160 megapascal so if we increase the bending moment in this uh, section as far as the furthest edge in compression would yield first so the bending moment is limited to yielding in the compression side in elastic phase in other words we can write down that sigma max in compression will be mc in compression divided by moment of inertia. In this case, as far as the cross section is completely symmetric, uh, we know that C compression and C tension are the same in the elastic phase. So it will be m divided by W elastic. So sigma max in compression is 160 megapascal and we can calculate m elastic with this equation bh2 divided by 6 i guess this value should be 2 yes and let's have some uh, numbers for this example assume b is 60 millimeter and h is 120 millimeter as a result w elastic will be 60 times 120 over by 2 divided by 6 so 1.44 10 power by 5 cubic millimeter. From these two equations, we can calculate M um, elastic times 160 megapascal and it will be 23 kilonewton meter. So with applying 23 kilonewton meter to this cross section, the maximum stress in tension and compression will be around 160 megapascal. Now, if we increase the bending moment from this uh, beyond this value of elastic moment, then the compressive side is not going to be increased in terms of stress. But instead, 
other fibers closer to the edge or to the top of this cross section will start to be plastic gradually so the depth of being plastic is increased from the top and to be in equilibrium the the location of neutral axis needs to be replaced so now we can sketch the stress distribution when m is 23 kilonewton meter so in this order of bending moment in the compression side we have 160 megapascal as well as in the tension side it's also 160 megapascal but we know that sigma or stress in the tension side can be uh, more than 160 and as far as it is less than 240 it is not uh, plastic so now if we increase the bending moment from this uh, situation so 160 will remain constant and then we will have a certain depth of uh, compressive side to be in uh, compression and the other side starts to have tension so like the previous example we can find out at what bending moment uh, the other side of the cross section which is in tension will be in its uh, yielding limit which is 240 so what we are going to calculate is the bending moment that compressive side is partially plastic and it's in the limit of 240 megapascal in the tension side so let's assume that uh, the height of tension side is y now this level will be h minus y and now we are looking for this y prime so the relation between y prime and y can be determined by the triangle principle this triangle and this one 160 divided by y prime should be as same as 240 divided by y as a result y prime will be also two third of y it's following the uh, coefficient of sigma compression divided by sigma tension in the yielding point now we need to have equilibrium in the cross section so i will write down f1 for the plastic part f2 for the elastic part in compression and f3 for elastic part in tension side this height is h minus y minus y prime I can write it down h minus y minus 2 third of y so it will be h minus 5 over 3 y so f1 the stress in the cross section is 160 megapascal times b and the height is h minus 5 over 3 y f2 it's 1 over 2 160 megapascal this is the average or uh, mean stress in this cross section in this part the width is b and the height is y prime so it will be 160 megapascal divided by 2 times b times 2 third of y if i substitute y prime by the calculated relation between y prime and y and f3 will be 240 divided by 2 times b times y so to have equilibrium f1 plus f2 needs to be as same as f3 so then 160 megapascal times b times h minus 5 over 3y plus 160 megapascal divided by 2 times b times 2 third of y should be as same as 240 megapascal divided by 2 times b times y and now I can just cross b and calculate y so to just simplify divided by 80 divided by 80 megapascal and this is 3 so it will be 2h minus 10 over 3y plus 2 third of y equals to 3 over 2y i multiply by 6 so it will be 12h minus 20y plus 4y equals to 9y so it will be 12h equals to 25y 
and then y will be 12 divided by 25 0.48 h so it means that when the furthest and soil side of the cross section yields then 48 percent of the height is going to be in tension we can see it's not as same as half of h that we might expect so when we have h h was we assumed h is 120 millimeter so it will be 57.6 millimeter now the next phase is to calculate what is the required bending moment in this phase 240 so we assume here is 240 and then 160 will be somewhere here and here this is y 57.6 and this was y prime two thirds of this value which is 38.4 millimeter and 120 minus 38.4 minus 57.6 will be 24 millimeter so we can see that at this uh, phase 24 millimeter of the entire cross section is in plastic phase now we need to calculate what is the required bending moment to have such situation we can calculate f1 f2 and f3 so f1 will be 160 megapascal times 24 millimeter times b was 60 millimeter 160 24 and 60 will be 230.4 kilonewton similarly here 160 megapascal divided by 2 the average because it's triangle 38.4 millimeter times 60 millimeter the width of the cross section 184.32 kilonewton and f3 should be the sum of these two but we can here just cross check not to make any mistake 57.6 millimeter times 60 millimeter 414.72 230.4 plus 184.32 it's exactly 414.72 so it shows that the calculation is valid now the levier arm of these forces to the new neutral axis so the first one is 38.4 plus 12 millimeter so 50.4 millimeter for the second part it's two-thirds of 38.4 millimeter 25.6 millimeter and two-thirds of 57.6 which is 38.4 now the required bending moment will be summation of fi times yi f1 y1 f2 y2 f3 y3 230.4 times 50.4 plus 184.32 times 25.6 plus 414.72 38.4 so it will be 32.26 kilonewton meter coming back to the elastic calculation m elastic was 23 and now we increase the bending moment until in the tension side which it has a more yielding capacity so that starts to yield now the next phase is the calculation of plastic moment so 23 32 and then it should be higher value for the plastic moment again as far as the material is not the same in tension and compression we need to find out what is the plastic neutral axis even the cross section is completely symmetrical here is our cross section from the side and we need to assume only somewhere to have the neutral plastic neutral axis when it is plastic it means that in the tension and compression side uh, the stress is completely uh, in yielding point for every level but the difference here is that the tension yielding point is 240 megapascal while in the compressive side it's 160 so 160 and in the other side it's 240 completely plastic 
here we have only two forces f1 and f2 y from top and the rest h minus y from the bottom so f1 will be 160 megapascal times y times b f2 will be 240 megapascal times h minus y times b as far as the cross section is in equilibrium f1 should be as same as f2 and then 160 megapascal times y times b is as same as 240 megapascal times h minus y times b we can simplify b and b 240 and 160 3 and 2 to 80 megapascal then 2y will be 3h minus 3y so then 5y will be 3h as a result y will be 0.6 h again we can see that in the plastic fully plastic behavior of the rectangular cross section the neutral axis is not in the center now we can calculate f1 160 megapascal times i can write down h was 120 millimeter as a result y will be 72 millimeter times 72 millimeter times 60 millimeter and f2 240 megapascal times 120 millimeter minus 72 millimeter times 60 millimeter and these two should be completely or exactly the same 691 to 22 kilonewton 240 times 48 times 60 691.2 kilonewton and we need to write down what is the levier arm from the plastic neutral axis the first one is y over 2 36 millimeter and the tension side is h minus y divided by 2 which is 24 millimeter now the plastic bending moment can be calculated by sigma f i times y i f1 y1 plus f2 y2 41.47 kilonewton meter so here we can see that uh, we have three phases to have the summary so m elastic was 23 kilonewton meter and m plastic is 41.47 47 kilonewton meter and we have also something between which is 32.26 so if the moment is less than m elastic so it means that in tension and compression the cross section is elastic now if bending moment so let's use this second m as m star or whatever you call it so if m is between m elastic and m star so the compression side is partially plastic but in the tension side or tensile side the cross section is elastic and now if bending moment is between this m star and m plastic partial partially plastic in tension and compression side and then when it's plastic so it's uh, completely hinge so in this example we went through a cross section which uh, is completely symmetric but the material is in a way that, that the behavior of the material is different in tension and compression so we calculated three phases for this cross section first the cross section is completely elastic then the compressive side which has a lower yielding limit becomes partially plastic while the tension side is completely elastic then we calculated at what moment uh, the tension side also starts to yield and after that the plastic bending moment for the entire cross section in the next example we will go through the uh, residual stress and also permanent strain of a cross section under bending moment which is greater than uh, elastic moment but less than plastic moment thank you for watching see you next time bye